The first thing I'm gonna do is mash these berries with this stick blender. What I like to do to be as efficient as possible is every day after I pick, I just throw the berries into a stock pot and then once I have a large amount and then I will make just one huge batch of jam. This is about three gallons. So this is three days worth of berries. If you missed part one of this video where Michelle talks about picking a gallon of raspberries a day, plus a lot of other harvesting stuff, there'll be a card that pops up in the corner that you can click on to go watch that first. But if you already watched it, then great, let's keep going. We have had this KitchenAid stick blender for probably five years now and it is still going strong. It's starting to rattle a little bit, so we might need a new one soon, but so far so good. This food mill is one of my very favorite canning gadgets. I use this for tomatoes and any kind of berries that I want to get like the seeds or skins or anything out of. So I run all of my berries through this food mill before I make them into jam. You would be amazed at how many seeds come out of these raspberries and it might seem a little bit wasteful to throw away all those seeds, but you can make them into vinegar or you can magically turn them into eggs by giving them to your chickens. And we just really don't like that hard, crunchy jam. See how big of a mess I can make. <laughs> this would be a good job for the kids. They're outside playing right now, so I'm just gonna let them go. There are definitely still some seeds that make their way down into the puree, but it's not enough that it's gonna destroy your jam experience when you're eating it on a piece of toast. I have heard of people who leave the seeds in because they say that's where the pectin comes from. But for this jam, you do not have to like boil your berries down, which is one of the reasons why I really like it because it has to make so that more of the nutrients stay in the raspberries. I'm gonna measure this puree into a measuring bowl to see how many batches of jam this is gonna be. Okay, so this is 28 cups of raspberries. So, that's seven batches of jam. So I'm gonna take my recipe times seven. So before I go and heat these berries up, I'm gonna add some calcium water. No worries, you don't have to go out and buy ingredients that you have no idea what they are. Everything to make this jam is included in this little box. You're gonna have one little packet of calcium powder, and then you're gonna have another packet of pectin. And those are the only two things needed to make this awesome jam. The paper inside the box will give you all the instructions plus the jam recipe that I use is right here at the top. I do four cups of berries to two cups of sugar. And I know that seems like a lot of sugar, but most brands that you buy at the store are half and half, so half fruit, half sugar. And a lot of the reason they do that is because the pectin needs to react with the sugar to make your jam thicken. But in Pomona's pectin, the pectin reacts with the calcium to thicken your jam. So you honestly would not even have to put sugar in this. You can use as little or as much sugar and I will go up and down with sugar content depending on what fruit I'm using. So strawberries aren't as sour as raspberries, so I don't have to use as much sugar. That is the main reason that I absolutely love this Pomona's pectin. I've got like this massive stack of it and I keep this on hand all summer long to preserve our berries. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I'm not very much of a recipe girl. But for this jam, I'm very precise in my measurements because if you get the measurements wrong, your jam will be either too thick or too runny. So I like to get this pretty exact. So I'm going to need 14 teaspoons. Now that my calcium water is in these raspberries, I'm just gonna stir it up. And once it comes to a full rolling boil, I will add in my pectin and sugar, and then I will bring it to a boil again, and then it's done. It literally is so easy. The thing that takes the most time is getting the seeds out. And other than that, it is honestly a breeze. 13. Okay, now for the sugar. Look away, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna mix my pectin into the sugar so that it doesn't get lumpy. That's what the recipe says to do. I realize fully that this is a shocking amount of sugar. 
I'm feeling shocked myself at the moment, but this is also a massive batch of jam. The thing is with jam is that you only put like a teaspoon on a piece of bread. These berries are at a rolling boil now, so I'm gonna start slowly adding my sugar. I'm really hoping that this pot is big enough. This is my all time favorite part of the jam making because this sugar turns the whole thing into this like gorgeous maroon color. Oh, it all fits. I'm gonna stir this until the whole thing is completely dissolved. And I do skim some foam off. I usually wait until after I put the sugar in to skim the foam off because some of it just like dissolves as you put the sugar in. You wanna bring these berries all the way back up to a rolling boil and then take it off the stove and you're ready to put it into jars. Runny jam is like a mom's worst nightmare. <laughs> There's nothing worse than when you give your kids a peanut butter and jelly and the jam just like runs out and gets all over their clothes and stuff. So one thing I like to do is I put a little plate into the freezer and once the plate is like really cold, I like to just put a tiny drizzle of the jam on it and see how stiff it is. Look at the glorious color of this stuff. I wish you could smell it in here. You can actually put this in the freezer. Let it chill completely. Okay, very, very carefully. There we go. I'm not gonna take the time to can this jam, so I'm going to put it in pint jars. I'm gonna put it into pint jars and just not fill it quite to the top. To date, I have never had a pint jar break, so this does not bother me with putting this in the freezer. If you're worried about it being inconvenient to have your jam be frozen, one thing to keep in mind is that because of the high sugar content, jam doesn't freeze like really solid hard. And so it really doesn't take long for it to thaw. This jam is so delicious and it really is very simple to make, but obviously it's only one small piece of the homesteading puzzle. It can look overwhelming to make a lot of your own food, but in this video right here that just popped up, we wanna help you overcome some of that overwhelm so that you can do it. 